So what we just saw was the custom web service option using fast API. What we will do next is look at the package container option. And this to me is actually a lot more interesting because it gives you, like I said, the ability to have portable um, applications which can easily be spun up at uh, will. So the fundamental unit of um, you know packaging here is what's called as a container. Unlike uh, the imagery that we have of a physical container, uh, containers in the world of software at least are actually virtual, uh, much like software itself is virtual in a way. So the virtual container here is actually what uh, is officially defined as a lightweight standalone unit that packages an entire application along with everything that it needs, including dependencies, code, libraries, configurations, such that that entire container can be shipped to whichever place is able to execute a container and can run there without any problems. So that uh, ability is, I mean, that ability to sh basically ship it to a specific place and have it run is why the, the word container itself uh, you know, came to be associated with this approach. Uh, because just like, you know, containers that uh, move physical goods in the real world, um, they don't actually have differentiation between what kind of goods are actually moved. Everything looks and feels like a one physical dabba, one physical container. So much like that, uh, these software containers are also, you know, can be thought about in a similar way. Um, in fact, I think the analogy that, uh, can be used as like a suitcase, right? A suitcase which has your, ha your app, its own, you know, Python packages, configurations, OS level changes, all of that ready to go. And much like a suitcase, it's something that you can carry along with you wherever you go without uh, having to worry about whether it, it, it will fit in at, at, at a place where it's going to, like it, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's the analogy. Uh, typically, uh, containers, rather, Containers have to, rather I should say, containers have to run on top of what's called as a host operating system. And then uh, it depends on the host operating system providing it certain um, APIs and certain you know kernel level uh, support. But most modern applications actually, or most modern host applications, host operating system support executing containers. The first container uh, uh, came from Linux, or rather originated as, a, as an invention uh, in Linux. And from there, it took off in a big way. And in fact, the world of um, virtual machines, which became, uh, which were the de facto methods of running, um, you know, standalone software, became kind of obsolete the moment uh, containers took off uh, in popularity. Uh, so we'll compare the two at a later point. Um, so containers running on the host operating system are isolated from each other, which means the effect of doing some changes within a container are contained within that container. It doesn't actually impact other containers. It doesn't impact the host operating system either. So that's a very useful property. Uh, behind the scenes, the, the containers actually share the kernel, which means that it depends on the host operating system to, to perform some certain functions. But those are not mutable functions as far as the you know uh, user-facing side effects are concerned, which means you can do what you please within the container and it wouldn't really have an impact on either the host operating system or the other containers which are executing. In fact, you wouldn't even know which other containers are executing uh, from within a container. So that's quite useful. So the advantages of a container-based approach for shipping software are many. The first is reproducibility. Like that's also what I'm calling it as. Um, yeah, okay. So these are related points, portability and re reproducibility. So Portability is where you can take this suitcase or this container and run it on any other host operating system which can, you know, uh, theoretically run containers. Like for instance, I could run, uh, I could develop my fast API based uh, program on Linux that uh, we just did in the last video. But for me to run that program or execute all of that in Windows might need some tweaks, might need to change the way that the Python program is uh, being called, the configurations are being called. Whereas if I do the container-based approach for that entire program, which we will do in, in, a, in a demo next, right? Um, then I can take the container and run it on Windows, run it on Linux, run it on Mac, run it on anything else which runs containers. 
and that's portability. Reproducibility is the twin of the entire uh, of that same feature. Here, it allows for anybody else who has access to that container to uh, arrive at that same software configuration and use the sof software in exactly the same way that it was intended by the person who created the container in the first place. Um, so for instance, let's take a model that we have built and now we use containers to actually package that up together. Now this version of the model, which is packaged in this container, can be actually deployed by somebody else, let's say some other researcher or one of our other colleagues or the audit function within a company or by a customer of us, right? And they can run that container and expect the same predictions and the same outputs that I would have seen as the person who created the container. So that's a very powerful guarantee to provide, which is reproducibility. The third feature or advantage is isolation. And this is something we were alluding to, right? The design of the container um, concept itself is such that other containers which are running on the, uh, on the same host operating system do not see each other. And any change that you do within the container is not uh, permanent on the host operating system. In fact, it's not visible in the host operating system uh, for the most part. So that isolation is super, uh, super helpful, right? Because then you can think about creating virtual environments without, um, you know, uh, like yeah, without having to worry about the impact it may it may cause on other virtual environments. And last but not the least, fast startup. And this is where it significantly differentiates from virtual machines. Virtual machines are entire hosts by themselves, which means um, you take an entire machine, which includes all of its booting, um, um, you know, the initial startup for the uh, operating system, uh, the kernel functions that the kernel has to execute for default services like file systems and disks and stuff like that, network interfaces. And all of that is heavyweight uh, because it all requires, um, you know, accesses to go from user space to kernel space, back to user space, etc. The context switching that's involved, the processes that are required to be executed, all of that is heavyweight um, in terms of operations. Like basically because you are taking an entire machine and, and, you know, and, and putting it into one form factor which makes it uh, virtual. That's all you're doing in a virtual machine. Whereas with containers, the, uh, the entire container packaging is designed in such a way that uh, it's minimal in terms of footprint. It's minimal in terms of process execution. So therefore, when you spin up a container for the first time, it's actually super fast compared to spinning up a virtual machine. And we'll see this in a demo. Okay, so one of the most um, important, you know, tools that we will use for containerizing applications is something called as Docker. Uh, in fact, uh, Docker started off as a standalone company which was open source, rather which open sourced technology for containerizing. And nowadays, I think when people use the word Docker, they actually refer to the open source project directly, right? It's become that popular. So Docker today comprises of a lot of different modules and it's an entire platform that uh, allows you to package software, ship it, and then run it as well in uh, portable containers, right? The same container that we just saw in the last slide. So it's very, you know, popular, like I said, amongst not just machine learning developers, but also software engineers, uh, startups, etc. So the core concept that, uh, uh, the core concepts that, you know, define Docker, the first is what's called as an image. The image is basically the base unit of um, what, what constitutes a container. So the, think of it as a blueprint, um, a blueprint which can be you know, instantiated into specific containers. That's what an image is. So uh, that's basically a read-only uh, object, which means the first time that you create a container, you would ask Docker to register the image associated with that container so that in the future, if containers are required to be created, all of them refer back to this image. And therefore, every one of those containers that get created 
will get created exactly the same way because the image that's been provided as input is exactly the same. So therefore, the image is like a blueprint for the container. Then the next concept is that of a container itself, which is of course what we just saw in the last uh, last slide. But here, let's be very precise. The container refers to the running instance of an image. So you could have as well multiple containers all running the same image, which means they are mirrored copies of each other. So that's a container. Then every Docker project has something called as a Docker file. Like a make file is basically uh, build instructions on how to how to you know build that particular image into a container, where to get the image from, etc. And last but not the least, it also has a registry. The registry which basically has a repository of all these images and it has traceability for these images who publish this image into this registry at what point in time, etc. Now, not all of these are part and parcel of the um, standalone Docker service that most you know, operating systems support now. Some of them are cloud-based services, like for instance, Docker Hub, I believe is a cloud-based service that Docker, the company or the platform offers as a centralized service. We're not going to use Docker Hub in our, uh, in our demo. Uh, we'll focus instead on the first three. Okay, so with that, we will move to the demo, um, which I will cover in the next video.